Hello guys, welcome to subscribe our channel. Now let's learn how to repair Huiju controllers. First of all, before we start the repair work, we have to prepare the all necessary tools. See, this is a Higan s and rework station, which we usually use 350 to 380 degrees according to actual repairing needs. You also can regulate the temperature. This is another big Higan with a large caliber. The big Higan is used to tear down the BGA. This is a Fluke Brain digital multimeter, most commonly used. Here we can see that it's a regulated switching power supply. You can adjust the power supply with voltage and current. Based on the controller requires, now the card uses 5 volts, so we set it to 5 volts. This white roll is the adhesive tape for marking. This is our soldering iron. This is a tin gun used for punching holes. And the column swaps we use to clean the boards. Cleaning function for cleaning PCB. This is a tin slag box. Here are serious pliers and wire strippers, a serial port converter, and tweezers, needles, and other gadgets. Now let's start with the C16C controller for example. I will introduce a simple analyzing method. First, let's know some basic working principles of IC and components basic faulty checking method on PCB. Here is an unique device ID for each card, which can be detected in software or player. Let's take a look at the power supply here. First, check the 5 volts power supply if it is normal. Near power supply, it is an insurance IC. It output to 4953 IC. Then 4953 IC gives power to R8091. Here R8091 is a power chip. Its role is to output main voltages of our controllers. It transfers 1.5 volts used by the DDR memory. And these lines are power for main control IC. A main control IC of GPU is 1.2 volts, and then some other 1 volt. Here two lines are 3.3 volts, system power is crack 3.3V. Then our this power chip. It is built in with an audio processing function. Audio digital signal is provided by main control IC. After the signal is processed, then they will give to the audio output. And the USB input port also to communication line with main control IC directly. And this is a Wi-Fi main IC. This Wi-Fi chip is named RK915A. This is Wi-Fi in China. It communicates with our main control IC. Here two RTU are powering to Wi-Fi, and the chipset in this area is the smallest core part of controller, including to DDRIC, and one EMMC storage chip like hard drive of PC, and this is a main control chip named P330. Here is an RT4 quark IC for battery backup circuit, which typically uses a small lithium coin cell battery for power, and allows to keep current time even when the main power supply disconnect. Here is an RT4 quark crystal oscillator named 32.76A. This crystal oscillator is used to provide crystal oscillator for our power chip PMU. Here is a 24M crystal oscillator is for main IC. This is a gigabit port IC. It's a voltage through the network transformer sent to this gigabit port chip and from the chip to FPGA. Signal is from main IC to FPGA, then from FPGA to the gigabit port chip and to the network transformer, then to the gigabit on port and sent to receiving card. This is a roughly running principle. Here is a megabit port for PC. Through the network transformer, input to the megabit port chip, then communicate with the main control IC. These are two memory chips to assist our FPGA work. Here on back side, we can see these are all two for five drive IC. After processed by driver IC, display signal will be output to Chan Hub 75 ports here. Of course, they need work with PC software each deployer for configuring. Now also share how to check receiving card for a pair. See, this is 5 volt power supply here. After power run, then here is 4953 protection tool. Its max withstand is 24 volts. Here it is a 3.3 volt chip. Power runs from the 3.3 volt chip to FPGA. Then FPGA will get powered. Here are two chips with 1.2 volt and 2.8 volt. When the VAC 5 volts power recognizes, they will convert to 1.2 volts and 2.8 volts here. Part of it is powering our FPGA. Part of it is to power our network chip. Number port IC itself has a 25 amp crystal oscillator along near it for providing oscillation. There is also a 25 amp crystal oscillator here, which used to supply power to FPGA alone. When check 40, we must meet some conditions. First, T power. Then check if these IC parts have 3.3 volts, 1.2 volts, 2.8 volts normally. 
Then FPGA will start to oscillate after their power supply are normal. After the crystal oscillator oscillates, the FPGA will start. After FPGA runs, you will recognize the network port. When network port recognize and runs normally, data will come in. After having data in, then our network port starts to process the data transmitted by our sending card. At this time, the data will be through FPGA. An FPGA will compile this RGB data into a signal. Then finally sent to 245 drive chips, signals will be processed by 245 operational amplifiers. At last, signals will be sent to the hub 75 port output to the LED display. Okay, the content shared above is some of our common maintenance analysis method. In general, working principle of our Huidu C16, C control card, and a 712 receiving card. If you have any other needs or questions, please leave your comments below or contact us directly. We will do more video tutorials based on your feedback. And we can also do some training separately for you. Like and follow please.